Let's find out how the universe works tonight. But before we do, let's make some sleepy time tea and get you guys nice and relaxed. Let's find out what's inside this book. Well, we've been through most of it. Yeah, let's just, let's just browse. How about that? How about that? So. We got a barred spiral galaxy, 61 million light years from Earth. The closest major galaxy is two million light years from Earth, Andromeda. Just to uh, give some perspective. And this we already went through in the origins of the universe. So we got 10 to the negative 43 seconds, then atoms start to form, the atoms start combining, or the subatomic particles start combining. this page right here. So let's begin with the anatomy of galaxies. So galaxies are groups of stars, gas and dust, that are constantly in rotation. The first were formed 100 million years after the Big Bang. Today there are billions throughout space, and they take on very different shapes. And they have the greatest number of stars in them accumulate at their core. Galaxies tend to group together in space due to the effects of gravity. 
and in doing so, they form clusters of hundreds or thousands of galaxies with varying different forms. So here, I used to really love this one in particular. I like, I like this image. It just, how you can see the thickness of the galaxy. A sombrero galaxy. This galaxy is located 28 million light years from Earth, and its name is attributed to the special shape of its spiral arms, which, which encompass a shining white core. Galactic collisions. Well, let's, let's look at the classification of galaxies first. Remove my subliminal messaging right here. So, Hubble's classification of the galaxies classified them into ellipticals, spirals, and irregulars, which encompass, I suppose, everything that's not elliptical or spiral. So, elliptical galaxies with old stars in the form of a sphere. They contain a small amount of dust and gas, and their masses vary in size. Spiral galaxies have a core of old stars that are encompassed by a flat disk of stars with two or more spiral arms. And irregular galaxies are galaxies with no identified, defined form. They can't be classified, and they're abundant in gas and dust clouds. Clouds of dust. Sub-classifications. Galaxies are subdivided into different categories depending on whether they are more or less circular. Hmm. And EO galaxy is almost circular. And they got SA galaxies that have a larger central axis. SC has a smaller, more spread out arms. Then we have clusters. It is always mind-blowing when you put it into perspective that these pictures look like us looking up in to a really clear night sky. But in reality, this is a picture of galaxies where each galaxy is made of billions. stars. 
And at the bottom here we have galactic, a diagram of galactic collisions. In 1926, Edwin Hubble proposed the existence of far away galaxies. And just three years later, he confirmed that they were moving away from the Milky Way galaxy. And he did that by demonstrating the reality of Einstein's constant. Boop. So 1.2 billion years ago. Let's see. So, so although galaxies, the universe itself, the space is expanding in galaxies. Are running away from one another, the ones gravitationally bound to one another, eventually collide. And this is a depiction of that happening right there. 1.2 billion years ago, there were two separate spiral galaxies. 300 million years later, they hit at high speed and then another 300 million years pass until a mutual cross is generated at which the shapes of the galaxies start to change and then another 300 million years the stars the stars of the spiral arms fly off each of the galaxies and then at its present state two jets of expelled arms of stars extend away from the original galaxies and then this right here is an actual photograph three three hundred light years Now I'm skeptical of everything else I read. Man. Once burned, right? So here we have two pages dedicated exclusively to the Milky Way. For a long time the galaxy was a mystery. It was a band of white stars in the sky. Then Galileo in 1610 directed his telescope up and saw that the weak, cloudy white band was comprised of thousands and thousands of stars. They practically stuck to one another and gradually astronomers started to realize that all the stars and our sun, including our sun, formed part of one large entity a galaxy, or a huge stellar hole. So generally the structure of the galaxy is that it has a central bulge, and I guess it dissects that bulge over here on this page. It has two spiral arms that rotate around the core. And in these arms are the youngest objects, the youngest stars and clouds, proto 
planetary systems can be found. Sagittarius arm, this one right here, and then the 3 KPC arm is the other one, I guess. And they're all rotating this way. On the Sagittarius arm, one of the brightest stars in the universe can be found, Eta Carinae. Our solar system, our solar system is located on the inner border of the Orion arm, which is, which ones? So, Eta Carinae is right there, and then, okay, so, it looks like the, the Orion arm. Look at this, 200 kilometers per hour to 250 kilometers per hour is the speed of the rotation of the stars around our galaxy. That doesn't even seem reasonable. It seems so slow. Wow. I never would have thought. No wonder it takes so long to orbit the center. And then we have the central region of the galaxy. The central axis of the galaxy contains old stars dating back to 14 billion years old and exhibits Here in the central region, Sagittarius A. Where the heck is it? Well, I can't find it. I guess they don't have it marked here. I saw, I just saw Sagittarius B2, so I assumed it was around here, but. Um, Sagittarius A and B can be found here. In the central region, although outside the core, a giant cloud contains 70 different types of molecules. These giant clouds are attributable to violent activities at the center of the galaxy from our black hole over here. So, hot gases emitted from the surface of the central part, they may be the result of violent explosions on the accretion disk, and a black hole is believed to occupy the center of the galaxy, and a black hole is believed to occupy the center of the galaxy. It attracts gas due to the gravitational pull it keeps in its orbit. And it says shining stars are created from gas that is not yet swallowed by the black hole. Most are young. And from the center outwards, the gas is struck and concentrated 
by gravitational force that may and is most likely attributed to a black hole. In the exact center of the Milky Way is marked by a very is marked by a very intense radio wave activity. And uh, that might be produced by the accretion disk made up of all the stars, all the stars that aren't being swallowed by the black hole. Says there are 200 billion stars that inhabit the Milky Way. The number of suns it contains is so high they can't be separated. isn't as well written, it's not as well thought out as I thought, but right next to it, it says, it's impossible to uh, distinguish them all, because there's so many of them, and then here, dark regions are produced by dense clouds that obscure the light, you can see here, from the uh, stars behind them. galaxies, there's a small portion of galaxies that are different from the others, distinguished by their high level of energetic activity. And this could be attributable to the presence of black holes at their core, formed as a result. And this is uh, what I ended in my last Universe Sandbox episode with. This could be attributable to the pleasant presence, the pleasant presence of black holes at their core, formed a result as a result of the death of supermassive black hole stars, supermassive stars. And it's very likely that these cores of the first galaxies are quasars which can be seen at remote distance which can be seen at a remote distance so gas shows here two jets are expelled from the core and emit radio waves if they cross paths with intergalactic gas clouds they form huge clouds capable of emitting x-rays or radio waves. It's believed
believed that the active galaxies are direct descendants of the early stages of the universe. After the Big Bang, these galaxies would have been left with a single a significant amount of energetic radiation. Quasars, small, dense, and luminous, comprise the cores of this type of galaxy. In certain cases, X-rays may be emitted, but in others, radio waves. Essentially the black hole is the source of all the energy that spits out these huge rays, these bursts, hundred million degree bursts, it's a temperature that can be reached at the core of a black hole. So a black hole swallows all gas that starts to spiral around. It forms a gaseous hot spiral that also emits jets at high speed. Its magnetic field dumps charged particles around the black hole, and the outside of the disk feeds on interstellar gas. And of course they think that it's all due to the force of gravity. The force that unites everything. Vast amounts of hot clouds start to join together. Then they, the clouds attract one another and collide. And then as part of these collisions there's so much matter over such a big distance that's finally coalescing. Stars start to accumulate. Uh, form from the, the gravitational concentration of all this matter, and atoms start to be fused together, emitting all the energy that E equals mc squared says is stored inside the atom, stored uh, between the bonds, keeping the atoms together. In a large it says here a large amount of gas accumulates at the center of the galaxy until the gra gravitational force increases and reaches such a level of intensity that a massive black hole grows. Of course not running out of things to eat until trillions and trillions trillions of years into the future. And here with uh, the classification of an active galaxy depends upon its distance from Earth and the perspective from which it's seen. Because of course it, these jets only point two directions 180 degrees apart. So you can imagine they orient themselves. In different directions. So quasars. They could be like this. In which case. The most powerful objects in the universe, quasars, are so distant from Earth that they appear to us like diffuse stars. They are bright cores at the remote of remote galaxies. Radio galaxies. Radio galaxies. Radio galaxies. Let's see. What does it say? Yeah, radio galaxies are the largest objects in the universe. 
jets of gases come out of their centers that extend thousands of light years. That's, that's what's so crazy. And the cores of radio galaxies are actually not visible. They're not in the visible wavelength of the spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum because they're in the radio wavelength. It's so bizarre that these things, that's like these itty bitty relatively small black holes and these jets spit out across thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of light years away from the centers of the galaxies. It's just so fast of a distance. It reaches out. That's it's one of the most um, most captivating aspects of studying this, and or you know not studying it, but just learning about it, is just how how much the the actual distances and the sizes, how large and how energetic these things are. It really gives me a sense of uh, wonder in the most the most profound sense. It makes me feel like the universe out here is something to be explored. And then the universe inside our our heads is a whole nother realm, equally, if not more, fascinating to explore. And, uh, you know, if, if humans are fundamentally curious, exploratory animals, then one of the most meaningful things we could do with our lives is explore the most complex things in the universe, which <laughs> might just be us. It's commonly accepted that most galaxies are formed from the progressive inactivity of nuclear quasars. As gases gather together to form stars, the quasars are left with no further gas left to swallow, and so they're rendered inactive. a uh, scale of stars, which I think I'll save for another time. But it is interesting to note that stars fall, fall in a very specific grouping along these um, spectral types with brightness 